the JAMA Network. I'm David Holmes. I'm the Scripps Professor of Medicine. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Mayo Graduate School of Medicine in Rochester, Minnesota. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement has become transformational technology that is now widely used in this country as well as around the world. It's estimated that more than 100,000 procedures have been done worldwide. We know that this group of patients is usually a very high-risk group of patients in whom surgery is either felt to be high-risk or some of the time the patients are inoperable. We have known about the in-hospital mortality and the early mortality at one month. We have less good and complete data on the one-year and longer-term data in clinical practice. And so the focus of this study was then to look at one-year outcomes in patients undergoing clinically indicated procedures with commercially approved devices in the United States in the TVT registry. That includes virtually all centers in the United States and virtually all patients being treated with TAVR in the United States who receive a commercial TAVR device. We needed to get then longer term data outcome and so for this we then turned to a collaboration with CMS to link the TVT registry data with administrative claims data from CMS for one year. Turned out there were about 12,200 patients in this study that had all linked data with CMS administrative claims data. They had the usual high-risk features, 85 was the, or 84 was the median age, about 50% were women. They had a lot of coronary disease, a lot of pulmonary disease, a lot of renal disease, a fair number were on renal dialysis. The mortality was 24%. About 4% of the patients had a stroke, and the composite endpoint, which was a primary endpoint of death and, and stroke, was about 26% at one year. 25%, which was, a, we thought, a low number of these patients had required readmission over the course of the first year on one specific occasion. An additional 12% had required a second readmission. This is a group of patients that had had multiple admissions, typically for congestive heart failure, prior to the TAVR procedure. So this was a really encouraging sign that, number one, in this group of patients, the mortality was 24%. That has been less than has been seen in some of the higher risk patients, and I think mortality is improving. Number two, that from the standpoint of stroke, the stroke rates are also somewhat less. And number three, quality of life as measured, as assessed by the surrogate of need for repeat hospitalizations is really much better than it had been prior to the procedure. There was only a single factor that was associated with increased stroke rate, and that was female gender. The future is going to be, number one, enhanced risk prediction algorithms for patient education. Number two, will continue to be problem solving to address the issues, for example, of stroke, to continue to assess the quality of life issues to see how that can be improved in this group of patients because from a societal standpoint, from the patient standpoint, from the family standpoint, those are the crucial issues and much more important for some patients who are 95 than is the duration of life that they have left.